blue, green, and black. Oh, right then. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And in a previous video, I was talking about um, turbos. That was the one. And the split cycle engine. And we briefly talked about efficiencies. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, answer a question that was left for me in the comments and I'll find it. No, we're not. <coughs> oh, no, we're not. Right then, time to get organised. So the question was, if you had an engine that was 100% efficient, is the turbo then useless? Um, and then uh, someone said, 100% um, efficiency refers to the energy that fuel contains. The gases from the combustion chamber would still be pressurised when leaving the exhaust port. They would just be at roughly the same temperature as they entered the engine. Uh, that's kind of true. So, um, to kind of, and then I started thinking about it, and then that got me on to this is an excellent way <coughs> to, instead of talking about where the losses are and stuff, let's actually look at an engine. What would an engine be like if it was 100% efficient? Now, there are loads of different efficiencies fuel efficiency, thermal efficiency, mechanical efficiency, and so on. What we're going to do is we're just going to say efficiency, just full stop. And we're in a sense, we're talking um, energy efficient. So we're talking it's thermal efficiency to a degree. It's a bit of everything. So uh, it's because uh, different efficiencies, um, they kind of blur the lines in a way because thermal efficiency, um, thermal efficiency is thermal efficiency. And we'll talk about exactly what that is in a separate video. Uh, and why that's so important and that's one of the reasons why engines nowadays are so much better than they were in the 70s and so much better than they were in the 50s and so on and so on <coughs> but it's a good place to start is to say right what would an engine look like if it was 100 percent efficient so you have 46 uh 46 47 megajoules per kilogram right so that's the calorific value of gasoline petrol about 46 47 it's somewhere around there uh, and it obviously depends on the blends and everything else like that and everything else being perfect but basically per kilogram that is how much energy is in there it's megajoules it's shitloads um it's a lot more than dynamite and so on and so on let's not go into that but regardless to have a hundred percent efficiency of an engine we'd have to convert all of this 100 percent of that weirdly enough 100 percent of that into motion that's what it would mean, right? So, seeing as though we've got that, what would this engine look like? Well, let's just say it's a standard engine, right? But it's got magic going on inside. So you'd have the usual gubbins, like so, crankshaft piston and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. So what it would mean is, is that air outside magically makes its way spontaneously into the engine. And that's where we start straight away. So we've got air that's outside, right? So this is outside and it magically makes its way in. So it was out here, there's no traveling. It's just in our cylinder now, right? It's just in there. The reason why is because um, when a piston is drawn down, uh, we are creating a volume and when the piston has to move, if you move anything, this has a mass and if you move it from there to there, work has been done. So energy is required to do that. So we're, we're ignoring that, right? We can't have that because it's, in, it's a pumping loss in a sense because we have to push down on the air inside the crankcase and piss that out the crankcase breather. <coughs> so we're ignoring that. So the air magically makes its way into a cylinder. The valves are frictionless and they are massless. So you can see straight away see the reason why it's 100% efficiency is impossible. But regardless, so the air outside is just say it's a nice average day. It's 20 degrees C outside. 
Then what would happen is once we filled this cylinder, we'd also have to inject fuel into this, but magically, right? We can't use power from the injector, from the battery. We can't use that. We can't move anything. So in a sense, this fuel has magically got fuel and air mixture and it's, it's just correct. It's a stoichiometric, so it's 14.7 to one for at sea level. So now we've filled this cylinder, <coughs> the next thing we do is the piston comes up and it compresses it, but again, there's no friction and there's no pumping losses associated with this. We're not even moving the piston. The piston is magically at the top and this air is magically compressed. Then what we do is when we ignite this air fuel mixture, there is a 100% thermal, not thermal efficiency, there's a 100% um, in a sense chemical reaction efficiency where it's 14.7 to 1 exactly and every single molecule reacts. So every single molecule in our long chain, hydrocarbon, gasoline and petrol and all our air react perfectly and then in a sense what we're left with is we're left with water, carbon dioxide and that's it. <coughs> or oh, nitrogen because that's what went in. Now this forces the piston down right so that's the only thing we can have is that for some reason camera shit itself. <laughs> so where was I? Right so what do we get out of this? Well like in that guy's um, comment he said that the out the exhaust gases should be 20 degrees C but this is the other thing they're not going to come out because they're at 20 degrees C it means the pressure inside the cylinder is exactly the same as it is outside so as soon as that exhaust valve magically opens it's not going to go outside the pressure inside the cylinder the pressure outside is equal you say well your piston pushes it out which is a pumping loss we can't have that either so this is basically the way it goes what you'd end up with <laughs> is if this piston went from magically here to here to here to here to here to here what you'd end up doing is filling your cylinder slowly with water basically that's what you'd end up doing and hydro locking it because there, nothing can force this stuff out nothing you know what i mean the uh, if the temperature in the cylinder dropped back down to 20 degrees c then all that water would just basically it kind of would stay as water vapor until it becomes too saturated to the humidity as soon as the humidity is 100 percent it'd start basically just leaching out water so <coughs> excuse me so <coughs> as you can tell i'm not the best so this is where all these efficiencies um fall apart you know why is why i'm the general combustion engine out there is 30 percent efficient well let's just start with it number one is we need to draw air in which means we need to move that piston down that's a mass that we have to move the crankshaft has inertia we have to accelerate that crankshaft <coughs> there are um, you know aerodynamic properties in here there is bearings there's the viscosity of the oil we have to shear the oil and all sorts so we start losing straight away we start losing this so it becomes 98 percent just from drawing stuff in now, that's just a guess you know what i mean it's not an actual number we have to move our valves we have to move everything so this is energy that has been drawn out of the system so it pumps into the system then we have to compress this this air this air fuel mixture the other thing is as well is injectors don't fire from magic that is energy in the battery that has been drawn from the uh, either charged from a different source but let's just say we started off with the battery or the energy in the battery is from the engine from the generator <coughs> obviously you need ecus and stuff they all need power it's very very little but they still need power that's another loss so then we compress this right so now we're down to like 80 percent something like that right and we've got friction losses absolutely bl bloody everywhere with your wrist pin to your con rod with your con rod to your, your big end bearings crankshaft the crankshaft main journals your piston to cylinder where your piston rings are you've got to accelerate all these masses there is friction in your chain sprocket for your valve train there is friction losses in your tappets there's friction losses in your valves every time your camshaft pushes on your valves you are compressing that valve it's wanting to resist to move we haven't even fucking gone bang yet so we compress all this mixture and um you know that takes quite a lot of work to do then as soon as you go out you ignite the bad boy and then all of a sudden we're getting power out but again there are losses there there are pumping losses because the piston comes down it has to push that air out of the way um, there are friction losses and other things as well stuff like sound vibrations you know these engines 
rock everything. You've just gone boom. Everything just everything basically oscillates because your cylinder just goes. Ugh! You know, because in a sense, the pressure the pressure just spiked, so the whole thing expands, and this rapid expansion and contraction makes sound. Sound is something that doesn't push you along. There's also light in a combustion chamber. There isn't much, but there will be light there. When you're spark plug, when you see the light coming out of basically an arc, that's just energy pissing off. Um, the resistance of all your wiring, stuff like for your spark plug, your um, you know your RF interference, that's just basically energy. Ever so slight energy is pissing away. So now we go bang, we've got some friction losses and all the rest of it. We can just say we're down to 75%. Right, 75%. <coughs> now all of a sudden, <coughs> excuse me, the, pi the piston's conducting heat away. It's also your water pump and your oil pump, they're dragging stuff out of your engine because it takes work to basically pump all that water and oil around. Uh, heat is leaching out of your cylinders, your um, because of your, your water jacket, your piston's absorbing heat and then pissing that off. There, uh, you know, even when there's like force that is applied to your piston rings and then shoving them against the cylinder walls, anywhere there's force involved that isn't used to create mechanical motion at the crankshaft, and then there's all your losses at the crankshaft. The fact that it's not a hundred, it's not a hundred percent mechanically efficient. It's not far off, you know. It's I can't what I did read one day. So I think someone said with the correct balance, a crankshaft is about seventy-five percent efficient, mechanically efficient, depending where it is in the stroke. But its peak is seventy-five percent. <coughs> but then basically, you take all them losses out as well, you know. And this is where we get to the big ones. Because what happens is you're pissing loads of heat through your cooling system. This energy in here, in the fuel, has, has basically been converted to heat. That's why they're called heat engines. It pisses through your cooling system. It pisses, you know, just basically everywhere. Through your valves, through your cylinder head, everywhere. Everywhere it's hot, there's a cooling system. Oil is dripping down and taking it to your sump and heating up your sump. And then obviously you have your exhaust stroke where it pushes the exhaust, well the exhaust gases expand out and the remainder are pushed out. When you do that your exhaust gets toasty, toasty hot. Your cylinder head gets really fucking hot. And all of these things. And then as soon as you've done all that and then there's a slight pumping losses of putting the exhaust gases out, you're going to just bottom out because there's a lot of energy that's just pissed out of there. And hence you end up with about 35%. See that is the problem. Um, how do we make engines better than they were 50 years ago and stuff? A lot of that is to do with mainly the, the, the two things, well it's the three things. It's the mechanical efficiency of converting a linear motion to a rotational motion. The other one is um, your thermal efficiency, trying to have a combustion process that applies as much pressure to the piston um, and basically thoroughly burns because the thing is you will draw in a cylinder, you know, you will draw in a cylinder's worth of air and fuel every time. Uh, if you don't burn that fuel completely and piss some of out, out of the exhaust, yeah, yeah, fucking, you know, a cabbage muncher is going to get cancer and climb up a tree or some shit like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that's, <coughs> it's the same if you do a bad, if you do one fill of your cylinder and burn 80%, or if you draw in fuel and burn 95%, the same function is still going on, the same friction is involved. So all the parasitic losses are the same, it's just that you're not making the best use of what you're doing in there. We'll get into this because this is all about um, swirl, turbulence, stuff like that, straight runners, um, uh, port geometry, but it's also about your combustion chambers, the piston crown, stuff like that, ignition, and obviously how your injectors deliver that fuel and how well it, it's basically fuel mixing. <coughs> combustion, <coughs> oh, Jesus. Combustion um, is extremely complicated because at the end of the day, you put it in a box, you go bang, and all you can do is have a look afterwards. Actually trying to analyze exactly what happens in there is very complicated and they spend a lot of time on it. Um, but, and then obviously you just piss loads of waste heat out of your exhaust and out of your, what is it? Now, there was a question that someone asked about the Formula 1 thing when they were saying, um, oh, you know, they've got 50% efficiency. They're actually talking about this efficiency, right? So the engine is not far off this. 
they basically have tighter uh, clearances and stuff so they're not, they don't have as much blow by using lighter materials like lighter pistons, lighter con rods, lighter everything. If you can remove some of the parasitic losses, <coughs> reducing friction, Nicosil, DLC, diamond like carbon, stuff like all these friction, uh, anti friction coatings they can get. They've got very, um, or the best coefficient of friction, stuff like that which is basically the lowest, they've got the least amount of grip. Um, you know, so basically what they're talking about is they're talking about how much fuel goes in versus how much, you know, how much energy and mechanical motion they're getting out of that. The way they do that is with energy recovery systems. Flywheels, is it the curb, no, not curb system, because that's, oh, is that? You know, the curb system I'm not too familiar with, but I've heard of it. <coughs> Flywheel systems the energy recovery and basically a load of electric motors and stuff like that. There is a downside with that because obviously electric motors, you know, they weigh quite a lot and having these battery banks and so on and so on. But they're doing racing, the more bothered about. We're limited about by how much fuel we have. We need to try and get as much energy out of that as we can to get round a racetrack. Um, so, you know, and we're, we're bleeding it off with brakes and stuff like that and all sorts. So there's the MGU-H and the MGU, MGU-H and the MGU-K, which is kinetic and heat. But any road, the fact of the matter is, is you can see just from this of what a 100% eff efficient engine would be like, it's impossible, right? You'd have to have everything that's massless, frictionless, right? And you could not... You can't accelerate a mass. As soon as you start accelerating masses, then you, you need a force to do that. And just moving it from here to here and back, that energy's just gone. Now, obviously, that is part of your mechanical motion, but it's all the strokes that aren't power strokes. <coughs> Bloody hell fire. I hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit. <coughs> Jesus, kill me now.